I tell you what, that's what God expects as followers. Not people that just talk Christianity. Anybody can talk. Even I can do that. But it's action that separates true Christians from those that just like to play church. All right? People that can get out there and cut it. I mean, get it done. And there's only one way you can do that, and we're going to learn what that is today. And at the same time, we're going to talk about this death when people are delivered up. That really shakes some people. But I want to show you, you've got nothing to worry about if you can do. You don't have a thing in the world to worry about. Can do type people are, they, they can do anything. And I'll explain that. Not by themselves. There's another ingredient, and I hope you all know what that is. Open your Bibles to Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to absorb uh, some of Paul's teachings here in this chapter 4. And we're going to work gradually down to the subject. And that subject being can-do type. T-Y-P-E. I hope you are a can-do type, and not just a talker, all right? Chapter 4 and verse 1, and it reads, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the word, my dearly beloved. Now, poor old Paul in jail, and a little melancholy here, and needless to say, he's um, reaching out there. Verse 2, I beseech... Eudias, and beseech Sintiki that they be of the same mind in the Lord. I wonder who those teachers are. They must be pretty special teachers. He's asking that they both be the same in the Lord. Do you know what the Greek is in this? It's feminine. It's two women. Two women preachers. <gasps> oh, oh, Lord, you shouldn't say that. Well, why not? It's in the Bible. Right? And, hey, if God chooses to use a woman, more power to her. All right? Hey, can do. Type people. Hang tough. And that's what we're talking about here. I can see we may have some men today that would like to claim that name. Who wouldn't they? You know, but it happens to be feminine, very feminine, and so it is. Oh, well, well. Verse 3. And I entreat thee also... True yoke fellow. He even calls them fellow. He don't mind yoke. He doesn't mind yoking up with them. All right. And after all, a little yoke never hurt anybody or something like that. As long as they work at it. Oh, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. With Clement. Now there's there's a male name, but it means mild. He's mild old boy. Also. And with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Boy, that's fantastic, isn't it? He's kind of, and, and I'm going to tell you what, many might say, well, what's new under the sun? There's nothing. I'm going to tell you what, you go around to a working church in the work hours sometime, and, you know, men like to say, yes, God made man, you know. I'd like for you sometime, I'm just doing this for the ladies today, all right, in part. Count how many women are working in the church. And then if you can find a man, count him too, okay? You'll see who actually does church work. And, and I'm proud of them, and I'm proud to call them yoke fellows also that help carry the burden for Almighty God. All right, now supper's assured tonight. Everything's under control and everybody's happy. Verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. What are you supposed to do in the Lord? Well, just try to rejoice. No, he said rejoice. You've got a lot to rejoice about in Him if you claim it, if you live it. Otherwise, I'll bet you've got a pretty draggy old life, don't you? <laughs> Too bad. Too bad, all right? Rejoice in Him. Boy, what a time to live. Exciting, vivacious times. Verse 5. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Meaning, uh, He's coming soon. 
And for us in this generation, that's a very true statement. This is the generation of the fig tree. The, the figs which were planted, the shoot was set out in the year of our Lord, 1948. And this generation is not going to pass away until all prophecy is fulfilled pertaining to this earth age. So you're in it, whether you like it or not. Have a good trip, all right? Enjoy. Verse 6, be careful for nothing. Now, this means don't be anxious. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. How do you do it? By prayer, but by thanksgiving. A lot of people know how to pray, but they forget about the thanksgiving. Oh, I don't have anything to be thankful for. You're breathing, aren't you? That's a lot to be thankful for. Your health. The very air you breathe. God created it. And he's looking for workers and laborers, both male and female, in the field that are willing to be can-do type people. He's looking. He's knocking. If you're not that type, I can understand why you haven't heard that knock. All right? Think about it. Uh, be anxious means, um, I mean, be careful for nothing. Do you know what that word really would probably, if we had to put it in English today, be... Don't worry for nothing. How many of you are worry warts? Oh, Lord, it wouldn't get done if I didn't worry about it. It'd probably get done a lot better if you didn't worry about it. I, you know, to worry is to doubt every promise of God. Oh, but I just feel so good to worry part of the time. Do you? I've never known a person in my life that looked like they enjoyed worrying. They look a little. They look a little fearful. Quite frankly, anxious. Well, you might say that. What are you worried about when you've got nothing to worry about? If you're can-do, and you know how to be a can-do type person. Verse seven, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You want to know how to find peace of mind? which sheds worry, which um, turns aside um, anything that might offend, that sort of thing, or, or what I should say, gives you the courage to handle that that offends, you know, by doing what? Making you a can-do type person. If an adversary arrives, can-do. Let me at him, all right? This sort of thing, you can handle it. The Lord can handle it. But... The peace of God comes through your association with Him, in Him, and through Him. Verse 8, finally, brethren, this, this kind of means the la last but not least, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, that's to say valor, let's say, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You take account of them, you meditate on them, that that is true, that that is honest. God's word is truth, do you meditate on it? You should. It'll change your life. I mean, it will literally give you something. Uh, you know, we receive thousands of letters each month, and you could, you could say that one of the prime themes of a first-time writer is that I've been studying a couple of three years. This is the first time you've heard, but the Word has changed my life. It will. It does. Thousands of them. Thousands of them. And some hard cases from drugs and what have you, changed their lives, made something out of nothing. A person going down the chute, now in business and prospering. It's just a real blessing to see the fruit of God and peace of mind that the Word brings when a person is can-do and does something besides talk. Verse 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard, 
and seen in me do. No, let me follow my example. And the God of peace shall be with you. Can you, do you believe that? Do you believe on Him? If you do, now, what you have both learned, you know what about learning? Learning takes effort. Well, I'll just pray and the Holy Spirit will give it to me. No, He won't. I guarantee you He won't. The only time that the Holy Spirit insists that you not even premeditate what you will say is when you're delivered up before the false Messiah. That's the only time. You'll read of it in Mark 13. Otherwise, the harder you work in the Word and absorbing, maturing, whereby you're a useful servant, God can begin to use you a little bit. You know, we have a... We have a unit out here at the hospital where they do surgery. And as a lot of Christians say, you know, you, you, you don't have to worry. I've never performed an operation, but your appendix is so bad, I'm going to trust the Holy Spirit lead me to this. You would have somebody that would be running the opposite direction. But you've got Christians that will do that. I mean, flat, biblically illiterate but they think they're something. They're not can do. Certainly not. God appreciates those that work. God does not appreciate lazy people. He likens them, as you remember in Proverbs, what is it, 25, to a door hinge. And their hinge is fastened to the bed. They just flop from one side to the other, you know, like a, an old door hinge. You know, I'd kind of hate for God when he looked at me to think that I just got an old door hinge there. He's hinged to the bed. Okay, well, God likes can-do type people. That's people that will learn, will listen. Not, not to man, necessarily. Yeah, sometimes you, it doesn't hurt to listen to man, but make sure you document him in God's Word before you put any stock in it whatsoever, because man will lead you down Primrose Lane if you depend on man totally. Okay, uh, next verse. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Didn't get a chance to show it. I mean, poor old Paul's in jail and, and so forth. Eleven, that kind of will bleed into the next subject which we're not going into today. Verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. In other words, I've been poor and I've been rich, he's saying here. And I can be happy in either place. Why? He's got the Word. A poor person can be very happy in the Word because you know what? He's not going to be poor very long. Or she isn't. Because the Word will give you sufficient. Now, it doesn't mean that God is going to bless you with a yacht and all that where you're out and gone and not doing your work for the church. But you'll have plenty to eat. And there are a few of us can remember when times were that that was a very important thing, was to have plenty to eat. That's why my Sunday evening meal is still cornbread and sweet milk. All right? Because I can remember times when that's all there was. And thank God for that. You know, it's pretty good grazing. Flop a lip over that and you've got something. All right? If you've got somebody who knows how to make cornbread. All right? Anyway, anyway, Paul says, hey, I, I can be happy either way. Don't matter. Verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want. They say being poor. I'm not complaining about being poor, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith uh, to be content. All right, next. I know both how to be abased, that means poor, and I know how to abound. That's to say, have plenty. Even uh, everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be empty. Do you know that you can get that from God's Word? Yeah. Yeah, it's there. Both to abound and to suffer need. What happens in God's Word if you do that? Have you, can you remember what verse 6 said? If, if you really have a need, remember verse 6. 
What does it say? Well, let's read it again. Verse 6 reads, Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about nothing. But in everything, by prayer and by supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Have you told him about it? Have you been thankful for what you do have? And think about that. Hey, he can change things. And if you don't believe that, you'll do without. He can. He will. He always changes things. May not be exactly what you wanted, but it's where he wants you. And if you love him, that's what you want also. Verse 13. Don't ever, ever forget this verse. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Did you, wow, did you hear that? I can do all things. And that's not what it said. That's only part of what it said. And that's how people get in trouble. They read a little, I mean, a nugget like that, and they already, they run that to the assayer's office to try it before they let it sink in real good, you know. How would it, you feel if I said, you can't do nothing of yourself. Now let's read it again and let it really settle in good. I can do all things through, got to have the through, or you ain't going through, Christ. Which does what? Strengtheneth me. Now, you know... Some people worry about pressure and the toils of life are so hard. Well, why don't, you, why don't you take on a little soup? Why don't you jazz up your motor a little bit? Take on a little strength that shows you through, and that is to say, Christ. He's not going to let you down if you believe that. If you don't, hey, I'm sorry, you're probably going to fail, probably going to fall. That separates believers from non-believers. Can do type people in Christ who strengtheneth you, thee. He will never fail in that. Well, I've always been kind of a weak person. Well, that's, I suppose, you know, I've had the experience in my lifetime of being in many places that I would not wish any of you to be in. You that had been there with me would say the same thing. Um, I might think of the Chosan Reservoir with 12,000 Marines and 120,000 Chinese, and it's 40 below zero, you know. And really, there's not much of a way out unless you are a can-do type person, unless you've got faith to know, hey, we can blow a hole right through them and make it out of here. You know what? We did. But we had a lot of help from you-know-who. Otherwise, you know, I mean, you figure it out yourself. 120,000 men against 12,000? That won't fly. It did. That's why you don't find too many atheists in foxholes, especially if it's 40 below zero. You start lowering that temperature and the, the uh, amount that turned Christian in a hurry... Uh, build up fast. Well, I wouldn't want you to have to go through that. I really wouldn't. Because, you know, each time one of us, we, we have this organization, it's called the Chosan Few, because there's just a few of us left. But we have one parting word that's always keep warm. You know, keep warm. Because we know what it's like to be cold. And, and I'm not going to tell you any war stories or anything like that. I'm just saying, be can do. Because God will always see you through something like that. And you know something? When you're really under pressure, that's not the time to crack. Okay? Like when you're delivered up before Antichrist, that's not the time for you to get wimpy. That's the time for you to document to yourself, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengtheneth me. He has told you that many of you are going to be delivered up. Well, I hope that you know that he's going to strengthen you, strengthen us, I'll get the old English, you, 
And you don't even have to worry about it or be anxious. Well, I sure hope you don't let me down. Hey, if that's your opinion, if I were you, I wouldn't go, okay? If you're wondering and have doubts that he won't take you on through, I believe you better stay home. Study a little more and become a can-do type Christian. Paul was, but never, never, never forget what strengthens you. It's Christ. Your gifts that you practice, never forget where they come from. It's God's gift, not yours. You can't take credit for it. But we're not, I mean, just to tell you, if you had, I don't know if you've ever noticed it or not, we're not very much on our own. All right? We've kind of a, I, I won't say a sorry lot, because I, I'll just speak for myself, I know. Okay? But with him, oh, man, what a difference. We can do anything. If we prayerfully, as verse 6 said, approach him and say, Lord, i got an idea. I believe if we had ten more television stations in this place or that place, we could do you know what? He'll give them to you. He will. If you've got the faith for it, and if you've got the, you know, if you've got the old faith, you can just walk right off in there with faith and know. But know where you're going first, Okay. Know what you're doing. Don't ever bet on another man's trick. <laughs> You'll lose. <laughs> no, you gotta, it takes, you gotta know what you're doing. You know, I've heard, oh, I guess I shouldn't get into that. Oh, why not? It seems the Spirit laid it on me. I know preachers that say, they don't know it takes six months to build an audience somewhere, like on television. It takes six months. Let's see, at a thousand dollars an hour, for six months, that's quite a bit, okay? But I am so good that all I have to do is ask, and the Holy Spirit will bless me, and we'll make it. That's the wrong approach. You should say if it's God's will, and God gives me the gift, you know, maybe we will. So, you, you know... You want to make sure that God is the one that's strengthening you and leading you into something, and you'll never you'll you'll do fine. There'll be some rough things, but hey, after all, what is a can-do type person supposed to be able to do? You don't worry about a little trouble. It's good exercise before breakfast to have a few problems to take care of. Oh, but take how to depress me? Why? It's fun to defeat Satan. Don't you enjoy beating him? Don't you like to kick dragon? I do. It's a good practice before breakfast, you know, to take a few names and kick a little dragon, you know, and you think can do type people. Man, that's my kind of people. I love them. While we're talking about this, let's go back where Paul, David rather, we'll leave Paul for a minute. Turn with me to the great Psalms. And let's try 56 on for size. While we're in this can-do mood here, mode, I should say. And while you're turning there, I'm going to read the title and, and translate it for you in English. To the chief musician upon Jonath Elim Rikokim, which is to say, the uh, dove of the distant tavern. Coos with love. You understand? Do you know who the dove is symbolic of? Who appeared every time the Holy Spirit did it? I'm sorry. Yeah, a lot of that would work. The Holy Spirit. All right. Dove. You know, he even called uh, Jonah uh, Bar Jonah. You know, Jonah is dove. Okay? So that was the title of this, you know, letting you know that the stamp of the Holy Spirit's approval is just stamped right on here, okay? And verse 1 of 56, can-do type people, keep your mind in gear. Verse 1, be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He, fighting daily, oppresses me. Now, as you note there, uh, David's got the Philistines, and he's got his own son, Absalom, Absalom the boy, <laughs> chasing him. Got a terrible thing going on. I mean, he's in a fix. But did he give up? Have you ever had a time like this where it just felt like, I mean, everybody you faced were trying to swallow you up? Well, remember Psalms 56. 
2. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many and fight against me, O thou most high. What are you going to do in a case like that? Well, what did David do? Let's find out. Verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Boy, log that away in your mind, beloved. That'll keep you from falling apart when things are rough. What? When you're afraid, if you feel fear begin to slip into your boots, then trust God. Do it His way. And then, what happens? We just read it from the New Testament. He will strengthen you. you you'll get a little, a little octane in your tank. All right? Trust Him. For in God I will praise His Word. W-O-R-D. Word. Absorb the Word. Take it into yourself. You know, this earth age passes away, but this Word is eternal. You're not wasting time absorbing it and meditating upon it. All right? Praise His Word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Why? God is going to protect you, and He's supernatural. Flesh man is what? Just that. Just a poor little old human being. But Almighty God is going to strengthen you if you put your trust there. Okay? That's the qualifier, though. If you don't, hey, well, I'd like to believe that. Well, then you don't. All right? You sure don't believe it if you have to say, I'd like to believe that. Okay? Think about it. Five. Every day they rest my words. They twist everything I say. All by their thoughts are against me for evil. Boy, I'm going to tell you what. You just go out and start teaching God's Word line on line and straight on and see if people don't twist your words today. Now, like, if you don't believe it, give the CRI a call and ask them what Earl Murray teaches. And many of you sit under my teaching, but what they say I teach and what I teach are two different things. Why? They don't like God's Word taught chapter by chapter and verse by verse. They would rather you were just a one-verse reverend going, la di da di da rather than teaching God's Word, all right? They, they'll just twist it. And when you listen to news today, I hope, I hope that you realize that you've got to think, always keep this in gear, all right? All right, enough said. They'll twist everything. That's very biblical, verse 5. Every day they rest my words. I guess we got that, didn't we? Six. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps. I mean, they watch my path daily. They listen how they may take me or trip me when they wait for my soul. That means they want your very soul, not your body. So, who's at the bottom of it? Satan, of course. That's what it's all about. Seven. Shall they escape by iniquity? That's a question asked many times by man. Are they going to get away with it with sin? Can they just keep sinning like that and get away with it? In thine anger, cast down the people, O God. And then, so that means the people that come against him, okay? Uh, against God's will. Eight, thou tellest my wonderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? You bet they are. They're by your record in the book of life, and there they stay. Verse 9, when I cry unto thee, when shall mine enemies turn back? This I know, for God is for me. In other words, when I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. I know they'll turn back. Why? Because God is for me. Do you have that as a known fact? Do you have that as a known fact? It's tucked away in your mind. You should. Because can-do type people know that um, God always strengthens them. Really does. Strengthens them real good. You can count on it. See, he knew that before you even ask, that's the frame of mind you need to be in. Ten, in God will I praise His Word, repeated for emphasis. 
In the Lord will I praise his word. Emphasis 11. In God have I put my trust. My friend, there is no other place. I will not be afraid what men can do unto me. Why? Because you're a can-do type person. Man can do nothing against a can-do type person that is strengthened by Jesus Christ. Just can't cut it. Might try, and he might have to get a few bruises. But hey, lay it on him. All right? I understand I'm speaking spiritually here, all right? Twelve. Thy vows are upon me. Man, what a comfort. The vows that God has made through the Son are upon you. And you're afraid? Come on, get off of it. Oh God, I will render praises unto thee. And you should. That's thanksgiving, and that's what you have to be thankful for. 13. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. You, you worried about dying? Uh-uh. Thou hast delivered my soul from death. Wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling, my little flesh things, uh, that I may walk before God in the light of the living? Can I continue working for you down here that I can be a can-do type person against those that try to can-do against your work? Naturally, he's going to strengthen you. So, always remember Psalms 56. Now, let's go to this subject of Antichrist killing some people. Well, open your Bibles to Revelation chapter 13. Let's don't beat around the bush. Let's get right to it. Now, remember, we put our trust in God's Word. His vow is upon us. And we read here in the 15th verse. Uh, let, me, let me just bring you up to speed. Revelation 13 is where the world political beast, many headed means it's uh, political. The political system rises from the peoples of the world. That's what the sea is, is people. And then in verse 11, whoa, we got somebody here that looks like a lamb. I mean, I think got two horns. He's got the voice of the dragon. In other words, it's the false Christ. Looks like Christ, but it's Satan. And he begins performing miracles in the sight of people and deceiving them. Because most of them thought that Jesus was coming to fly them out, and they didn't know, they hadn't read the word that the Antichrist comes first. And this is what he orders. 15. And he gave, had power to give life unto the image of the beast. That's to say, the one world political system. Naturally, if he's supernatural, he can make a one world political system work. That's, you know, that's no problem. If, um, oh, I'm tempted. If Willie can do it, hey, come on. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Man, there it is right there. Hey, I mean, they're going to be killed, but God has given us life. But who is it talking? Who's going to be killed? Have you ever read the 11th chapter? The two witnesses are tried first, along with others, but they're the foremost leaders. And what's going to happen to the two witnesses? They're going to be killed in the pata, in the Greek, the arena. Of course, in your 11th chapter in English, it's street. And their bodies lie there for three days. And what happens to those bodies? At the moment Christ returns, they rise from the dead. They were never dead to start with, but the, the flesh just had kind of gone a little out of commission for a minute. And then Christ returns at that time, you see. But it's written, they're going to die. Antichrist intends to kill the two witnesses. And do you know something? They could care less. I'm talking about the two witnesses. Well, who are they? I don't know. But I know one thing was written... 
They're not worried about it, so don't you be. All right? They're set. They're loaded. They're locked. All right? No problem. It's, it's written. That's the way it's going to come to pass. Now, Satan is coming as Jesus, so he can't really go around butchering a bunch of people. Okay? Because he's the great imitator. I'll ask you, did Jesus go around butchering a bunch of people when he walked the earth? I don't think so. Uh-uh. He was a savior. All right? So that's what Antichrist is going to come as, is a savior. That's the only way you can play false Jesus. Okay? So, so you bet. Yeah, that's what it says, and that's what's going to happen. But don't you ever forget Revelation chapter 9, verse 4 where God gives Apollyon. Do you know what Apollyon in the Greek is? It's, a, it's 622 in your Greek dictionary, and it means the destroyer or Satan. Do you know what the word perish or death is? Well, it's, um, it is a, a word from the same prime. That's what Satan's name is, is death. All right? When you're talking about Satan... Jesus would say in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, I came to this earth to die on the cross whereby I could destroy Satan, which is to say death. Right? That's his name. Right? So don't get all excited every time you hear the word death. That's your enemy, Satan, in part. Now, I'm not talking about, yeah, where bodies die and so on and so forth. But, uh, and, and that is well. Boy, that fell a long ways down there. Let's see. Uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 10, okay? Let's understand, well, you know, if, God's gonna, if Christ is going to strengthen us and we're can-do type people, we really need to check this out. What, what should we be afraid of? There's a few things that, there's one thing that he says you should really be a little, you know, a little concerned about it. And you'll find it here in the 10th chapter of Matthew. Pick it up with verse 27. This is kind of a running theme in the gospel, so pick it up real quick for me, okay? What I tell you in darkness, Matthew 10, verse 27. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what you hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And this looks forward to that time that you will witness for him. That the Spirit, if He tells you, you speak it. That means the Holy Spirit is directly instructing you. And and in the end times, that that the tongues on Pentecost, which was a very clear tongue, not unknown, both sons and daughters spoke it. And it was understood in every language of the world, quite the contrary to being unknown. All right? That's what that's all about. All right? 28. And fear not to them which kill the body. Man, you don't have to worry about them one instant. But are not able to kill the soul. Whoops, now we've got a different kind of death we're talking about here. Two of them. Body and soul. All right? But rather fear him which is able to destroy. And there's that old word Satan again. 622, that's the prime of it, so that you... Uh, what does that mean? Well... It all kind of primes from 575, which is apo, which means taking a journey, or they're off. <laughs> they're off and running. Well, I guess I've digressed now, but be that as it may, all right? It means there's a change, all right? Destroy both soul and body in hell. That's the one you want to worry about. If you think you've got something to worry about, be concerned about that. Don't worry about men. God has already promised you. I can handle it if you trust me. Do you? I don't know. That's kind of up to you to answer, isn't it? Do you? If you do, you really don't have that much to worry about. But I'd kind of like to, in as much as I have received many questions on this subject, of, are we really going to be killed by the false messiah? I mean, I understand he's going to have long horns and a pitchfork, you know, red long handle underwear. That must mean he's coming in the wintertime, huh? I'm teasing, all right? I'm really just teasing. Um, no, he's going to look just like Jesus, all right? 
tux, and I mean, no, Jesus never wore a tuxedo, but I mean, he is a fancy Dan. He's a good-looking dude, too, okay? Got it all going for him. So you, you want to have this part down pretty good, because someday you're going to stand there. And you're going to, we're going to see what kind of stuff you're made out of. I'm not trying to frighten anyone. I'm rather teaching whereby you are not frightened, whereby you have the answers. Okay? Um, let's continue on in verse 29 in that 10th chapter of Matthew. Are not two sparrows sold for a fourthlin? That means uh, uh, about a penny, all right? Or a tenth of a penny, I believe it is. And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father's knowledge, may I add. Now think about that. Nothing happens God doesn't know about. And, hey, we just happen to be, um, well, won't go, um, disregard. I mean, he knows about everything. Let's go on with the next verse. But the very hairs of, you, of your head are all numbered. God knows about you. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. You don't have to fear. As I quoted from, from um, uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 4, I'm not sure I've completed my point now that I think about it, but God told Satan there, Apollyon, he said, hey, you can go down and sting those that are stupid. Well, those that are biblically illiterate is what he meant, okay? But don't you dare touch one of those that have the seal of God in their forehead, which means this word absorbed in your brain. Because you can't fool a person once they know the truth. You're not tempted by lies because you know the truth. So Satan has no power over you. You, quite the contrary, have power over him in certain instances. And don't ever forget it. Don't give ground to that sucker. Take it. Take ground. All right? I mean, the very hairs of your head are numbered. That's how precious you are to God. Um, okay. Thir 31. Fear ye not, therefore... What did that say? Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. No sweat, no problem. But you know, we still have this one driving force in, over in Mark 13. Let's turn there, if we may. Mark 13. That, that talks about death. I mean, it just really right out there and says it. And not only that, it says it right here in this 13th chapter where you're delivered up before the synagogue of Satan and that you're not to premeditate what you'll say beforehand, but you will speak what Almighty God gives you in that hour. And then down here in the 12th verse, of Mark 13, uh, it says the Holy Spirit, uh, let's see, well, I'll read the 11th while we get to that 12th. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, in thir Mark chapter 13, Mark chapter 13, verse 11. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no fault before in what you shall speak, neither do you premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Spirit. That's who's speaking, all right? Therefore, you can trust that's going to be right. Now, here's verse 12. Boy, we've got to find an answer to this, or we're going to have some people that are going to be a little willy-wally, a little excitable. What does it say? Now, the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son. Children shall rise up also against shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. Well, what are we going to do with that? That sounds... And what this is referring to, so that you can picture it, many people believe that they're going to be raptured out of here before the false Christ appears. Therefore, they think that that is truly Jesus come to fly them away and they can confide in Jesus. You know, a son doesn't turn his father to death. Not knowingly he does. 
But he will go to who he thinks is Jesus and say, Jesus, my dad is really a pretty good old boy. And he really thinks he's worshiping you. But he thinks you're the Antichrist and that he's waiting for the true Christ. Could you talk to him? And I'm sure Antichrist, yes, I will. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> So, they will deliver someone up to death, for Satan is death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. I came to this earth to destroy death, which is to say, Satan. All right? Now, but it would seem here that we've got a little more depth to this, though. And I purposely have brought you to this point feeding into your mind that there are two deaths we must think of. And it is one death that the God's election are warned of. Turn with me to Luke chapter 12, and let's get a real good grip and understand what kind of death we're talking about here, hoping that it will alleviate any anxiety that anyone might have. Let's pick it up in Luke chapter 12, verse 3, in, 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 um, in closing. We're going to close with this set of scriptures, for I, it will document all things that we need documented. Teachings of Luke chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, whatsoever you have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. Now that triggers your mind and you know where we are. And that which you have spoken in the ear in closet shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. We don't have to explain that again. For, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that killed the body. That's just say your flesh, your knee-coles. And after that have no more they can do. In other words, it's finished. Hey, once you hang a man, <laughs> sorry, that's it, you know. It's all in God's hands after that. Okay? Uh, but I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell, which is final death. Okay? Yea, I say unto you, fear him. That's the one you want to worry about. Now hang on real good. Or, verse 6, Are not five sparrows sold for two coffins, and not one of them is forgotten before God? It's true. We just covered it in another gospel. 7, But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Now, many of you probably have never looked, but get a magnifying glass and look. It'll say one, two, three, four, you know, look at it close. Not really. Just, I just want to see if you all are awake. I don't want to put you off to sleep here. Okay? God knows your mind, all right? The hair is hooked up right in here to the main trunk, you know, and that's why you want to be careful if you ever pull one out, okay? Okay. We're awake. Now, verse 9. But he that denieth me... I'm sorry, verse 8. We, we better get back and get that. And also I say unto you, Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. And that's true. They, they rejoice every time you do a good work for God anyway. They're knowing instantly. Do you know, just like it's written, that every time someone converts, that the angels rejoice in heaven? Do you think they don't know what's going on here? Of course they do. Verse 9. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. So you want to be real careful about denying God, especially if you know better. That's where it really gets serious. Here's what this is all about for can-do type people. Verse 10. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, that is to say, Anthropos, Christ in the flesh body, as he walked in his teachings on earth, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven. Meaning, absolute, positive, sure death. Well, well, well who can commit that? It tells you. 11. And when they bring you into the synagogues, now when is that? The synagogues of Satan, of course. 
and unto magistrates, that's to say governmental officials, world officials, and powers. Powers like what? Powers on high. We don't war against the power of the arm. That's what you put the gospel armor on for, is to stand against the fiery darts of Satan. All right? Take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. Why? Twelve, for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, shall teach you in the same hour. What hour? The hour of temptation, what ye ought to say. So, my dear friends, if your relative delivers you up, and if the Holy Spirit chooses to speak through you, and if you refuse the Holy Spirit the privilege of speaking through your lips, your relative has delivered you up to death. For it is the death of the unpardonable sin. Now, I wonder how many would ever, knowing who Satan was, when they were delivered up before him, and God wanted to speak to them, would ever give Satan one ounce, one second of time. It won't happen. It cannot happen. Because you don't find Satan tempting. You find him rather an abomination. Look what he's done to your people. Look what he tries to do to you and to your family. Don't ever let anyone convince you that for one second you would have the least doubt about bowing a knee to Baal. You would not. As a matter of fact, many of you, I, I kind of got a feeling you might live for the day when you can just let her fly. <laughs> just take name and kick old dragon, you know, for that day. But that's why... If you refuse that Holy Spirit and you would have full knowledge knowing the time and the place that this is your, your destiny, so to speak, to come to that hour and then tell the Holy Spirit to shut up, you're not going to let him speak to you. Sorry, Charlie. You would be dead, 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 dead. There ain't no deader, deader than that. Unpardonable. In other words, death is Satan's name, and you would slip right in the same channel with him. Will that happen again? I can do all things in Jesus Christ. Can do type people. There is no hope that Satan is going to win over any of our people. That is to say, God's election, those that know better, those that know the Word. Good Christian soldiers with the gospel armor on and in place. So do you have to fear death? Of course not, because you're not going to bend. You are a can-do type person for Christ and in his name. And I don't have any doubt about it. So sick him. <laughs> sick him, I say. Okay, well, we come to that time. The year of our Lord, 1998 that this old generation of the fig tree is beginning to get some gray on it. So it does not hurt you to ponder these things and to meditate upon what you would do if and what you would do this, but just don't premeditate what you're going to say. Okay, that could get a little touchy. But know the Scripture. Why have I taught this to alleviate anxiety and fear from the hearts of the brave, those that have a destiny? To know that God has his thumb on your social security number. <laughs> oh. he, has, <laughs> he has a protecting angel over your head that is watching and looking. You'll find that. Uh, I almost turned to it earlier and I, I changed my mind. I didn't. Of, um, where that um, has, your protecting angel has the face of God at any time that he chooses, meaning God's attention to protect you. So you don't have anything to worry about. Does that mean no trouble will come? Will. Will. You can cut it. Because you're a can-do type person. You work good under pressure. So let pressures come and immune yourself to it. 
there is a little inoculation you can receive that helps you, and that is called the Word of God, or a little shot of the Word, all right? I'm speaking spiritually, all right? I know I don't want any of these people to get nervous about needles, you know, that need a fix, to think ever they could get it that way. No, it comes through learning, hearing, and studying God's Word. And so, what can I say in conclusion? We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Man only fears the unknown, and has he not written you a letter and foretold you all things? If you'll just think it through a little bit, that you don't have anything to worry about, you're not going to commit that second death, which is what would be the price of the unpardonable sin. Okay? No way. You long rather for the privilege and the opportunity of standing up for him. So, we have nothing to fear. The two witnesses certainly have nothing to fear, whomever they are. They're anxious. And we just thank our Father for his word, for his letter, for his truth, that strengthen us, us, we all, in his endeavors on this earth, that as we come into this new year, 198, that he lead, that he guide, that he strengthen, and he will. If you remember verse 6, go to him in prayer. Father, almighty God, we come to you with thanksgiving for the many blessings, Father, through the platform that you have given this ministry around the world, Father. And may we be better servants, Father. And we are yours to use, Father, as you so choose. Touch, bless, we ask it in Jesus, Yeshua's precious name. Amen.